Hey Gearheads, this is JJ and Jeff uh, with GearReport.com and uh, as you can see we're in a different setting, we're finally back home. Um, a little bit of a relief of uh, the big uh, run and everything we had this past week at SHOT Show 2017. So a um, couple of things that uh, we're doing today for you guys is uh, the last two days of SHOT. We were so busy with the schedule and uh, meetings and everything we had. Uh, man, we skipped on the best five that we could find on the several days, both Thursday and Friday. So, this yeah, is let's it. Let's dive in. Yeah, it's thir Top Thursday. Top five coolest things from SHOT Show. These are things we saw mainly, honestly, mainly things I saw yeah. on Thursday. Uh, JJ's team was doing other things. Um, so think about we'll add a six that'll be a top you know, we'll be this will be top six top six top cool six. things we found at shot uh, shot show 2017 on Thursday okay number one Thursday evening we were invited to the facts and firearms bullets and burgers event this is where they uh, rented out a uh, indoor Shoot shooting things. range in Las Vegas that had I think it was five rooms each room had five five lanes yes. so 25 different lanes of different firearms some of them had one gun actually most of them had, had two, two in it yes. and uh, most of them were we were evaluating testing firearms and some it was triggers uh, lots of cool stuff but the one yeah. that uh, I didn't even realize till afterwards when I was talking to the to the company rep um, I knew last year the Desert Tech MDR stirred up all kind of interest. Everyone was like, holy crap, this is going to be an awesome, you know, bullpup. Um, the MDR yeah, so. wasn't available. They just, they didn't get it done. They thought they were going to launch it last year. Didn't get it done. It was available. The Desert Tech rep told us that, uh, told us afterwards, we were, we were early in the group of media that got through. And he said, you know, this is the first time that this has been out in the wild. You know, the MDR, they have been working... So it's been on development since last yeah, year, lots of you know, development ironing versions. out kinks and things. So. It's finally ready for prime time. We were some of the first people to get our hands on it and actually get to jerk the trigger a little bit and actually did a conversion. Yeah, everybody knows that I complain about, you know, how little accessibility to left-handed guns. And uh, I told the guy, it's a bop-up style. So bop-up, of course, the action is toward your shoulder. So any release of the cases will really hit my chest if I'm shooting them. So I told him, do I need to shoot it right-handed or left-handed? And I told him I was a lefty. And he said, oh, that's no problem. And probably even with filming, with an explanation, within a minute or two, he had converted the gun for a left-handed shooter. And I went ahead and took several shots and never had a problem. So yeah, really that neat. was awesome. We'll, we'll show you more on that later. We're gonna try to get one to review. I mean, we thought we were gonna get one last year, but then they didn't come out. So who knows what's gonna happen this year, we'll see. Um, SDTA, SD Tactical Arms, uh, they have something they call Weapons for Warriors. It's a project where um, they custom make a rifle for typically it's a combat injured service member who, um, honestly, it's mainly been guys who went and, and fought for our country. And as a result, they, they came back without limbs. But, you know, shooting was a part of their life before. They'd like to keep doing it. SD Tactical Arms is a very custom shop. Is able to modify some of those weapons and make it so that uh, these guys are able to, to get out and shoot effectively and have fun and really high-end stuff. Yeah, so, so during the um, SHOT Show, they actually had an event scheduled and uh, they were, you know, unveiling one of the rifles that they manufactured for, uh, one of our Wounded Warriors. So yeah, ahead. we got to see them award that yeah. rifle, a little trickery involved. So one person, uh, it looked like he was getting it, and then he said, but this is not really for me, and he presented it to his friend who was pretty overwhelmed. And, and I apologize that I don't have their names off the top of my head. I don't want to say the wrong thing, so I'm just not going to say anything. So RAM mounts, most it's people know RAM phones. mounts for what? Cell phones. Cell phones, you know, yeah. They mount your cell phone to different items, I think. Exactly. Yeah, RAM mounts, uh, they make some com consumer-oriented product for holding a cell phone in a vehicle. If you've never been in the military or an agency uh, that uses their stuff, you probably don't know they make really heavy-duty military-grade stuff and a whole wide range of it, as well as things for hunting, you know. Um, they had a really cool UTV vehicle set up in their booth that had mounts for all kind of stuff everywhere. And I said to the to the marketing guy there, I said, you know, we've got the Project Humvee Battle Wagon, and we are early in outfitting it with different upgrades. Um, why don't we get together? and put together a, a package, design 
um, a comprehensive use of RAM mounts throughout the Humvee. Uh, because honestly, I said, I don't know their products as well as they do. They have a military division that they're going to put together a package of cool things that we can do with RAM mounts in a Humvee. They'll send them, we'll install them, we'll review that. So keep an eye out for that. I uh, don't know how long it's going to take to get that together, but sometime in the next few months. Uh, we spent time Thursday in the Savage booth and checked out all the rifles. We had already shot the MSR-10 Long Range, is one of their new AR type rifles. Friggin' awesome. I was, I've never shot 800 yards before. I was pinging stuff off of the, the gong at 800 yards with that. And, so. and that's a little bit more of a chassis style uh, sniper or long range. Well, no, not that one. Not that one. The chassis style, that's what we want to talk about now. Uh, BA Stealth, they had a, a 10, 110, and 11, 111, something 11, like that. They had another one I can't remember the name of. GRS, GRS, that's the one. The GRS from Savage, that uh, real heavy, you know, bench sniper type rifle. Uh, they had a couple in the chassis line, but then they had this one as well. All really cool. Um, we're going to work with the long range folks at Savage to figure out what we want to review when. I mean, they're great. They're, yeah, whatever you want, we'll send it. You can review it. I don't think we want to spend all year on just Savage. We'll figure it out. Leave us some yeah, comments on what would interest you. You know, for the RAM mounts, leave us some comments on what would interest you to see because we're putting together these reviews now. Um, if you go look at SD Tactical Arms, I know Daryl had called me a couple weeks before shot, said, dude, we got to talk. And then I wasn't able to catch up with him, and we didn't have time at SHOT to really dig in. So I know he has a project in mind as well. So let us know. Check out their websites and products. Let us know what you'd like to see us do. The last one, another <laughs> neat one. So we talked about Desert Tech and how the MDR made a big splash last year, but then it didn't show up. I'm crossing my fingers that Skelly is able to get their X11 out the door this year. So we got some exclusive... Um, pictures, footage, or early footage rather, yeah. of uh, the two prototypes that uh, are the latest iteration. They believe that they're pretty much done. Um, interesting. Did you notice that on the folding stocks for these uh, rifles, um, they're rough. They're not as polished as they could be. Yeah. They're 3D printed. Wow. Um, and that's so, not so, what so it's, it's going to be in production. So it's just pretty much you but, know, get, getting the rifle completed to show well, uh, the prototypes. At the show. 3D printing yeah. allows some really cool um, prototyping. Yes. Uh, JP, JP Enterprise is one of the uh, GMR 15s we looked at. It's the same thing as Had the, a the, 3D printed brass deflector on it. And he said, you know, you, you couldn't tell. I mean, he had to tell me. But he said, you know, we're just waiting on the final parts to be finished. I think they're waiting to be coded or something. That's not how yeah. it's going to ship, but to get it out for the show so we what, could see. What it. was the other brand? Operator system suppressors had mm -hmm. 3D printed uh, items on their booths so yeah. they could show you. Yeah. And also the metal parts because they are manufacturing yeah, already. That was pretty cool. But um, yeah, it was widely used this time, I guess. Yeah, so anyhow, Skelly, um, they're saying into Q2, maybe early Q3, they'll have rifles ready to order. And this is a modular rifle system that they have. What are they going to do? 223, 556. 300 blackout, 6.8 SPC2, and 6.5 Grendel are the four calibers that they're coming out with. Really neat kind of a, a collar system with a, a little pin you pull down and it releases the collar so you can unscrew it, take it off, Exchange put the new one on, put the new barrel on, screw it in, release the pin, and you, it indexes and holds it. A uh, really neat system. We'll put more about that in a separate video. Yeah, Those and, are the top five things. I was just going to add saw. on the Skelly, um, the two rifles that we saw are the only two working prototypes that they have at the moment. Like Jeff said, it's going to be Q, end of Q2, beginning yeah. or, or middle of Q3 when they're going to be released. Um, we're really hoping for that one. Did yeah. I tell you what's going to happen to those rifles? Yeah, they're going to go through the torture chest. They're going to beat the crap out of them. They're going to destroy them. them. And uh, that's part of the reason why they were, you know, the working prototypes, they, yeah. they're, they're really going to uh, beat them up to see what happens they're to them after them the to torture failure. test. Yeah. And that's, that's you know, the last step of their, their quality checks, I guess, yeah. and design validation. Uh, so anyhow, that's my top five. 
Did and, you come up with uh, yeah, something to add? And there's a company that I've been seeing some uh, rifles in movies and uh, action shots uh, of snipers. In the movies, they show them taking the rifle from a little itty bitty case and putting it together. And uh, so the company is Nemesis Arms. Mm. And Nemesis, um, I don't want to get the name wrong, but I, I think the couple of the rifles, one of them is the Vanquish and uh, one of the things that interest me the most with them is it's a company that is manufacturing and uh, targeting the LEO, the operators, uh, officers, and, and uh, where the budget is a little bit limited sometimes, but it is a true sniper pl platform. Um, and they actually cater to both left-handed and right-handed shooters, but they do it differently. They actually, when you purchase one of the rifles, they provide you a left and a right-handed bolt so you can shoot the same platform left or right handed just by switching that bolt out and um that's fantastic truly ambidextrous cool stuff so, all uh, right so i'll go check them out more you guys yeah. check them out too so it was that day three that was so we day had three, industry Thursday. day at the range yes and then that was a way off way outside of town in the desert uh and then we had tuesday wednesday Thursday, Friday, those are the days the show the floor was show open itself. at SHOT Show 2017. Yeah. This was day three of the show, of floor. The show floor. So go check out, we're gonna film the uh, day four here in just a minute. So we'll upload that to YouTube as well. While you're there, subscribe to the Q Report channel. You know you want to, you know you like it, then you're not gonna miss, you'll get notified when uh, new vo new videos go new up videos because up. unfortunately we got behind in video processing we are going to this week post lots of videos from shot show some of them will be the cool products videos we got a variety of booth videos where we go more in depth with specific products there's a couple of ones that are Ooh. very interesting <laughs> you guys yeah. will see a bunch of shooting that we did at the uh, burgers and bullets event and the media day at the range and at the six at hour range the day. six hour range and you guys and we did the you guys got some video the, the better on we did the, the on B sunday yeah. they had a, a better on um operator and and um companies that are related to people that have served in, right. in the military so yeah. there were a fewer companies there um it was a smaller event but it still it still gave us access but you got to some video yeah we did okay. get some video and, and we and, need to figure out i saw uh chief ron okay you guys probably know chief ron navy seal dude big dude with the eye patch and the beard he's very the branding for his company reaper outdoors is ron he looks like a pirate i'm sorry pirate. chief <laughs> Yeah. Don't kill me. Yeah. He'd kill me with his pinky, I'm certain. We like Ron, but I ran into Ron in the hallway and one of his SEAL buddies. But those group of veteran-owned companies uh, went by VFOB, you know, uh, Veterans Family of Brands, and they just changed the name. And I'm sorry, Chief, you told me what the name is. I don't remember. We're going to have to figure that out. Yeah. And they, they give us a couple of yeah. cool products and things that we're going to utilize while we do some of the videos. Sure. And then we'll we'll keep you up to date on yeah. what those are. So. Yeah. i got to call Ron this week, so I'll figure that out and I'll let you know. And we're going to review some Reaper ammo here pretty soon as well. Because I hear Ron's good at killing things. And he's made some ammo that should be fantastic for hunting. So we're going to check that out. Uh, lots of stuff to come here on Gear Report. Sorry to ramble, but I'm telling you, SHOT Show, <laughs> people don't understand how overwhelming it is. Yeah. We had six people working the floor at SHOT Show. What percentage of booths do you think we actually got to do more than just walk past? Like actually spend as, as little as 10 seconds looking at it. Wow, um, I'd probably say about 15 to 20 percent of the public show. Say. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. four days. We were there early. We stayed till late. And, and I know my team, TJ, was with me for most of the week. Yeah. And it's good. Me and TJ are like 6'2, six, 6'3, six, 6'4, six, six, somewhere in there. We got long legs. He needed them to keep up because we were moving the whole day. We had no downtime. It was yeah. go, go, go. Anyhow, sorry to ramble. We're going to go film. Uh, Friday's top five cool things we found at SHOT Show. So go check that out. And as always, see you at the range.